All right. Folks, in the interest of time and because I kind of developed this graph, these graphs slowly, I've gone ahead and graphed them for you. Okay? What you should do tonight is go home and try to resketch these graphs from scratch without me having already graphed them for you. Okay? Because what does the first question say to do? Graph the displacement function. Okay. All right. So I want to talk about this phrase here, rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion means one-dimensional motion. Okay? So although I'm going to display this information in two dimensions, because I've got two variables, this object is just moving back and forth on a track. It's just moving back and forth on a line. Okay? And this object's displacement is given by S of t, by this polynomial here. Now, this model only works for time values between 0 and 6 in this case. The model breaks down beyond that, or we don't want to model it beyond that. Okay? It makes sense that 0 is usually the leftmost value of the domain. And in this case, we've arbitrarily picked 6. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and graph this function s of t. I know it's already graphed for you. What I'm going to do here is come down. What was the function for s of t? s of t was t cubed. Minus 2t squared. Minus 2t squared. Minus 15t. Minus 15t. Folks, use your college algebra knowledge as best you can. The graph of this is a cubic, a polynomial. When you try to graph a polynomial, what's the first thing you try to do? What should you do if you're going to try to graph a polynomial? What do you say, Abby? So we're going to factor it here in just a second. How come? So what would you like? I mean, what would you like to plot on this? Zeros. Yeah, I think we want to go ahead and plot the zeros of this, the x and y intercepts. Okay? If we can plot those, we're actually well on our way to graphing this thing. Okay? So let's find the intercepts. How do we do that? We set the output equal to zero. Okay? Now, I have a hard time solving cubic equations. I've forgotten the cubic formula. Darn it. Okay. So what should we try to do? Well, it turns out there are many numbers that will add or subtract to give you 0. Think of some. Okay. 5 plus 3 minus 8. That will give you 0. Pick any other. There are many, many triplets that will add or subtract to give you 0. But there aren't that many numbers that multiply together to give you 0. Specifically, if two numbers multiply together to give you 0, what do you know? One of them has to be 0. One of them has to be 0. So, the trick to solving polynomial equations generally is to rewrite this sum of, what do we call these pieces? Each one of these is a term. We rewrite these sum of terms as a product of factors. Okay. So here we go. This factors, as Abby says, let's factor it. We get t times t minus 5 times t plus 3. How are we doing, folks? So what are the zeros of this? The zeros of this polynomial are at t equals 0, t equals 5, t equals negative 3. Those are the three numbers I can plug in to make this expression 0. Okay. Sure enough, when we're ready to plot this thing, we're going to go ahead and put, plot these three intercepts here. right? Then we just rely on our skills from college algebra that says, hey, this is a third degree polynomial. And what's the sign on the leading coefficient? It's positive, okay? So because it's an odd function with a positive leading coefficient, we know it's going to come in through the bottom and go out through the top. Okay? At this point, we can basically graph this thing, right? What don't we know? We don't know exactly where it turns around. We'll get to that in just a moment. So what we don't yet know is where is this point right here and where is this point right here? So we're going to find those. All right. We've answered the first question by graphing s of t. Graphing, the, graphing v of t and a of t will be easier because they are polynomials of lesser degrees, right? My biggest question to you is number three and number five are the what question? How are these two questions related to each other? They're the same question, right? They're the same question, but
But for number three, I want you to use the graph of s of t to answer the question. And for number five, I want you to use the, answer, the graph of v of t to answer the question. And I need to make sure that everyone in your group understands the difference between what you're looking for between those two questions. Okay? So that's your task, is to understand what am I checking in number three to answer the question, and what am I checking in number five to answer the question. All right. So here's some answers. If you haven't gotten these right, go ahead and discuss them. Okay. Uh, so when are we to the right of the starting position? We are to the right from five to six, soft bracket, hard bracket. Make sure you've got those correct. If you don't understand it, please, please, please talk with your neighbors or talk with me. When are you to the left? From zero to five, soft brackets on both of those. Why? Now, when are you moving to the right? So you're moving to the right from, uh, uh, from 3 to 6, and you're moving to the left from uh, 0 to 3, with a hard bracket on the 0, a soft bracket on the 3. Why is that? Discuss that with your group. Make sure you all understand that. Okay. You'll get the same information here, so you get the same answer here. But discuss with your group to make sure everyone understands what you're looking at in the second. Uh, when is the velocity of the object increasing? The velocity of the object is increasing um, from 2 thirds to 6. And when is the speed of the object increasing from 0 to 2 thirds? Let's see here. Let me be a little careful here. 0 to two-thirds and uh, three to six. Okay, so those are the rest, the rest of the answers. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, no worries. Those are the rest of the answers. Okay, make sure that you can get those. All right, folks, let's go ahead and talk through the answers here. Now, I want to look at number two here. What are you asking yourself in order to answer number two? What question do you ask yourself? Great. So when we're going to the right, we ask the question, when is S of t positive? What's the answer to this question? We're positive from 5 to 6, not including 5, but including 6. The S of t values are positive. This is the critical question. Folks, my goal is that you would have come up with that. If I want to know when are you to the left, then what do we ask? When is S of t negative? When is S of t negative? All right. Number three. Let's just talk about the question, when are we moving to the right? When the speed is increasing. Ah. Everyone hear what Alejandro said? Go ahead and say that a little bit louder. When s of t is increasing, we're moving to the right. Why? So let me give you another interpretation of that. That's a perfectly valid one, but give me another one. MC. When the slope is positive. What do you mean by the slope? I agree completely, but what do you mean? The curve, whenever it starts going, the tangent lines ah, start going positive. That's what I'm looking for. When the slopes of the tangent lines are positive, the function's doing what? Increasing. So draw some tangent lines on here. What are the slopes of all these tangent lines? They start out being negative, then there's a zero, and then they become positive, becoming even more positive. So what is the derivative of position? Everybody, the derivative of position is? Velocity. Velocity. So velocity tells you whether you're moving to the left or to the right. Careful, whether you're moving. It doesn't say whether you're to the left or to the right. It tells you whether you're moving to the left or to the right. You're moving to the right when your velocity is positive, which is when the slopes of your tangent lines are positive. When do the slopes of the tangent lines start being positive? Just past whom? Three. Just past 3. At 6, what is the slope of your tangent line at 6? It's positive. So do you include 6? Yeah. What is the slope of your tangent line at 3? What's the slope of the tangent line right here at 3? Zero. Zero. 
So do we don't include it because what are you doing at what are you, what are you doing when your slope of your tangent line is zero? Your velocity is what? Zero. So what are you, are you moving to the left or moving to the right when you have no velocity? Neither. Neither. What are you doing? Standing still. Standing still. Okay. All right. Then we jump into graphing v of t. Folks, how did you graph v of t? Did you just go off the one I gave you? Ah, this is the velocity function, which is the derivative of the position function, right? So v of t is simply s prime of t. Folks, do I want to take the derivative of the function in factored form? No. no. Oh, come on. Don't you want to do a double product rule? No. no. What should we use? No. When it's in expanded form, because then we just get to use the power rule one term at a time. What's the derivative of this function then? 3t squared minus 4t minus 15. Folks, I have no problem asking you to factor something like that. Okay? This factors to be 3t and t. And let's see, we want a 3, it gives us and a 5. And let's see, the larger quantity gets a negative, so we want this to be negative and this to be positive. What are the zeros of this? This is 0 at t equals negative 5 thirds and at t equals 3. Why did we want to know where the zeros were? Well, it's a polynomial, right? So we just found the x-intercepts of this function. We just found the x-intercepts are at negative <coughs> 5 thirds and at positive 3. Does everyone see that? It's a parabola. There's the y-intercept, right, at negative 15. The only thing we haven't plotted is the what of the parabola? It starts with a v, ends with an vertex. The vertex. Do you guys remember the vertex formula? Of course you do. Negative v over 2a, f of negative v over 2a. I'm going to wait on finding the vertex, because I've got a better tool now. I've got the tool of calculus. Okay. So let's hold off on finding the vertex. But other than that, we've got the graph of this parabola, right? Of course, the graph is only good for t values between 0 and 6. That's all we actually graph it for. But I went ahead and put dashed just to show you the whole thing. OK. We can actually now return to the graph of s of t. Because we just found that the derivative of this function is 0 when t equals 3. So that means we've got a horizontal tangent line to this function when t equals 3. So now we know where this turning point is at t equals 3. All we have to do then is plug 3 into the original function to get the ordered pair of the point where this function turns around. This graph turns around where it has a horizontal tangent line. Where does it have a horizontal tangent line? Where the derivative is 0. Down here, down here, we said the derivative is 0 at t equals 3. We said the derivative is 0 at t equals 3. That's precisely where this has a horizontal tangent line. Now, if I want to find the y value, what do I do? Plug 3 into where? The derivative? No. If I plug 3 into the derivative, what am I going to get? Zero. Zero. That's how I found 3. Where am I going to plug 3 into? The original function. The original function, that'll give you the height of that point. Okay. Same thing over here. This is at negative 5 thirds comma something. How do I find the y value? I plug it into the original function to find its y value. Powerful tool, this calculus. right? OK, now that we've got v of t graphed, I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm now going to ask you one more time, when is this object moving to the right? But here I don't want you to look at the graph of s and answer questions about the slopes of the tangent lines. I want you to look at the graph of v. So what question are we asking for in this problem? Do we want to ask where is v of t increasing? Let's be careful with that. Ah, where is v of t positive? Where is v of t negative? Because if your velocity is positive, what are you doing? You're moving to the right. If your velocity is negative, what are you doing? Moving to the left. If your velocity is zero, what are you doing? Neither here nor that. You're standing still. Okay. So. On this function, where is the velocity positive? Here we can see that your velocity is positive from t equals 3 
to t equals 6. Now, at 3, is your velocity positive? No. no what's your velocity at 3? Zero. Zero. So do I include 3? No. No. But at 6, what's your velocity? In fact, take a guess. What's your velocity appear to be? Just take a guess from the graph. At t equals 6, what does your velocity appear to be? 70. About 70. I don't know if I uh, remember. Where are units? Where are units? Uh, horizontally, time, s. Doesn't, oh, feet, feet, for per second. So you're moving at about 70 feet per second, right? So the, the difference between these two questions, between number three and number four here, is here I'm asking, when is v of t what, as far as moving to the right? I'm asking the question, when is v of t positive? When is the derivative positive? What am I asking here? And I, I want to go with Alejandro's formulation. What am I asking here? When is s of t doing what? Increasing. When is s of t increasing? So can I get the same answer from both graphs? Yes, but what information do I look for in each graph? It changes. It depends on which graph I'm looking at. If I'm looking at s of t, I ask where are the slopes of the tangent lines positive? If I'm looking at v of t, I'm just asking when is the output positive? Okay. Folks, I think this is extremely helpful. I didn't do it yet. What are my units on this? What are my units on this? What are the units on S of t? S of t is simply your displacement, right? How do we measure displacement? It's just how far you are from the zero position, right? So what are the units on S of t? Feet. So if I want to ask, are you moving to the right, that's a question about S of t's derivative. What are the units on v of t? These are feet per second. That's, at, that's telling you how you're moving. So, if, so that makes sense, right? If v of t is positive, what are you doing? You've got positive velocity. What are you doing? You're moving to the right. Folks, I am beating this to death. Okay? But it's worth really spending some time on this. Okay? Please, please, please watch the video on this. Please, please, please take some time to think about this. Okay? Because here's the problem. Sometimes if I give you a graph, the answer to the question will be where is the graph positive? Sometimes if I give you a graph, the answer to the question will be where is the graph increasing? How do you know which one is which? Okay? It's by running through these series of steps that we just went through. Okay, moving along. Let's graph A of t. How do we find the acceleration here? A of t is the derivative of the velocity function, right? Acceleration tells you how your velocity is changing. It's the rate of change of your velocity, okay? Which is just the second derivative of the original position function, which in this case would be 6t minus 4. When is this function 0? Minus 4. That happens when 4 is equal to 6t. That happens when t is equal to, I heard somebody say it, 2 thirds. That's where this line crosses the x axis, right here. That is precisely where, that's precisely where v of t has a horizontal tangent line. Where v, of t's where v of t's derivative is 0, that's precisely where s of t, excuse me, where v of t's derivative is 0, that's precisely where v of t has a horizontal tangent line. All right, the next question asks, when is the velocity of the object increasing? Okay. One way to look at that is to look at the function for velocity and say, where does the velocity have what? Tangent lines with positive slope. So I think then the answer goes from 2 thirds to 6. Another way to answer the question is how? When is A of T positive? When is A of T positive? From 2 thirds to 6. Where does V of T have tangent lines with positive slope? Where is V of T increasing? Is the same as where is A of T positive? 
All right, the hardest question on here is about speed. Okay, so I'm sorry to do this to you. I'm going to clean up my mess. It'd be a lot easier to talk about this if I cleaned up my mess a little bit. I would like to graph the speed of this object. Okay, this is how I choose to do this. There's another way you could do this, but we'll do it this way. I'd like to graph the speed of this object. What did I say speed was? Absolute value of velocity. We said it was the absolute value of velocity. How do you take the absolute value of something? If it's positive, what do you do? Leave it alone. How do you if it's negative, what do you do? Change the sign. If it's zero, it kind of doesn't matter. Normally, we say you leave it alone. Okay, but it doesn't actually doesn't matter if it's zero. Okay. So here's our velocity function. I want to take the derivative, or excuse me, I want to take the absolute value of the velocity. So for this part, even though that part's not part of the graph, I'm going to go ahead and graph it anyway. The output's what? Positive. How do I take the absolute value of something positive? Leave it alone. Down here, what's the output? Negative. What do I do? Change the sign on it. Careful, this goes through at about 15. That should go through at about 15. Make that a little bit nicer. Okay. Right here, we're still, everything's still negative, right? So I'm taking the out, so it's just getting flipped around. And right here at two thirds, it's got a little peak. And it comes down. Right? What did I do? I just reflected this over the t-axis, right? Oops, this should be, uh, starting here should be a solid line. Sorry, folks, because that's where the domain begins, OK? And then for all these positive values of v of t, what do I do? Leave it alone. OK, now that we've got the graph in blue, the graph of blue is the speed. And I don't have a good letter for speed, so I'll just write speed there. Okay. When is the speed of the object increasing? when it has positive tangent lines, tangent lines with positive slope. Where does, this, where does the speed curve have tangent lines of positive slope? Between 0 and 2 thirds, and again from 3 to 6. OK, that's a tough question. Uh, if you haven't mastered that one yet, that's OK. Take some time to think about it. All right.